All right, um, we're over here at DIY Auto School today, and we're working on a 69 Mustang Mach 1. Is that a Mach 1 or a Boss? That's not a Boss 302. That's got a 351 Cleveland in it. Get your shit together, Dave. That is the wiper. Dave, can I say something before we start out here? You need to get your cars down, dude. Okay, it is not a yeah, Boss 302. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not a Boss 302. It's a Mach 1. Okay? Okay, fine. 351 Cleveland. So what we're doing over here, we're restoring this car. Now this is a long process job here because this is actually an on-frame concourse restoration. When I say on-frame, we're not removing the suspension front and back and we're not putting it on a rotisserie, but the whole car is being restored inside and out. And what we're working on today, we're working on our power steering. That is not power steering. This car had manual steering on it and what we're going to do is we're going to convert it over to power steering. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. There's a company out there that has designed and devised a situational, uh, you might say, um, part where you, the owner of that 1968-69 and possibly 70 Mustang, can now convert your car over to power steering. Very easy, very simple, and, and with no problems at all. Now, there is one little situation that me and... Uh, Mr. Dave Guy the Mechanic Fuck Off Dude have found out is that the steering column has got to be modified. Is that right, Dave? Yeah. How do you know? I hope manual to go replace the gearbox on him. Okay, why did you walk out of the picture, I Dave? Don't know. I know. There, look, you're right here, bud. Okay, there. Yeah, you don't, okay, right there. There you go. You don't need to keep walking out of the camera. Now, we found out by reading our uh, directions, you might say, and, 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 and researching it, that the steering column has got to be shortened, I believe, by an inch and a half or two inches. Let's look at the kit and see what we got and what comes in it before we start doing this because Dave's standing around twiddling his thumbs and got one thumb up in his ass and he's sucking on his other thumb, not doing anything and getting paid. I want to know where my paycheck is, Dave. Don't open the box yet. I don't need that camera set up, Dave. Man, you have got to be able to film this cut and splice, dude. You don't just go slamming shit, See, baby. I don't do this. Okay, well, now you do. If you're going to be using my shop, okay, that's the situation, Dave. shit up when we can show millions of people out there how they can save money and do stuff at home when they're working on their cars. Right? Pay you ain't paying pay nothing pay. to fucking work here, so sit down and relax. Before we go any further, I want to let everybody know I don't fucking advertise. All right, These cocksuckers that make this product don't pay me to advertise their product. But the only way that you, the viewer, is going to find out what the fuck's going on is we're going to have to at least show the box with the name on it. So if you catch the name then that's good for you. 
But as far as me going out of my way and advertising for these fuck faces, I'm not doing it. Because they're not paying me, and I had to buy that bitch. And let me tell you something else. This is not fucking cheap. The gearbox alone, just the gearbox, is 500 fucking dollars. Now, that doesn't include anything else. That's just the power steering gearbox. Let's open it up. Let's see what we got. All right, so as we open the box, we're going to look inside and see what this comes with. Now, um, they supplied us with two fittings right here. And what these fittings are, these are our converter fittings for our power steering to number six AN fitting line. Do you know what that means? Dave? Conversion. Okay, that is our conversion fitting. That's what that means. So we can use AN number six braided steel pressure line or what have you to uh, our um, power steering pump that we are going to install. And then it comes with a brand new rag joint. This is a rag joint that is possibly, I would say, uh, a replica of the original one and it comes with the instructions in there and all of the brand new nuts and bolts and then of course speaking of nuts and bolts look what we got there Dave look at that is that fucking nice can I see your hand over here let me see your hand see how clean his hand is everybody when you work for my friend Pete and you're doing work over here your hands stay pretty clean Dave because we're using brand new shit Good. And then we come to the big boy, big bad daddy motherfucker of it all, and that is our brand new, and this is not a rebuilt, this is brand spanking new um, power steering uh, gearbox that will be installed on the 69 Mustang. Now I want you to pay close attention, that is a $500 item I'm holding right there. $500 just for the pump, that does not include any of this little bullshit here or it does not include any of the uh, uh, what, what do we got reservoir the power steering pump and brackets and all that so if you have to purchase that that's going to be a little more and then um, we're going to talk about installation right here now what we're going to do before we go and install this we're going to have Dave the mechanic guy Mr. fucking freebie over at my friend Pete's he's going to go ahead and completely remove what old gearbox. Okay, you're going to take the old gearbox out, you're going to take the, uh, uh, the, what's that pivot arm, the, uh, uh, let me point at that there. We're going to go ahead and remove all this right here, which is our drag link system, and then we're going to go ahead and remove this item as well, which is called the, what, Dave? Wake up, Dave! Come on! I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to let you tell us what it is. What is that? Pivot arm! There you go, not pivot. All right? So the first thing we got to do before we start anything on this job is we got to get the old gearbox out of the vehicle. We'll remove the pitman arm and all of the drag link, tie rod ends, etc. Because we're going to completely rebuild this whole front suspension brand new. But this video says basically about how to convert your car over to power steering. What we are going to do to remove this is if you look right there you can see there's three bolts. Um, those bolts are actually, there you go, one, two, three, just like Sesame Street. Thank you, sir. That was nice of you to do that, Dave. <laughs> to locate those bolts, you're going to have to go on the outside of the frame rail, which will be on the inner fender well of your vehicle. And if we look right there, you can see there's one, two, three. Now, those also have special washers on them. Those washers are very thick, and they're a certain style and shape. Do not lose those washers. You're going to have to reuse those because those washers right there have to be used due to the fact of... Of what, Dave? Why? Bolts from Why do you have to use those washers? Do you know? They're locking washers. They're no, they're not. Through. They're not locking washers. They're flat washers. But why do you have to use those? Keep them from backing or the bolt from backing No. Up. Okay, no, you're wrong. Do you want to come over and look Are at these spacers? bolts and I'll explain? No, they're not spacers. Okay. Okay, that washer that we're looking at right there, the reason that that washer is there is because this frame rail is hollow. All right, and what happens from many, many years of use from turning your wheels will crack the metal around that. So using this washer right here will eliminate that frame rail from cracking. So it's very important to make sure that we use those washers so we do not want to lose those washers. Now these bolts that I'm looking at are possibly 9 sixteenths or 5 eighths in diameter. Those bolts need to come loose. Once that happens, the gearbox will fall out, but we have to remove the rag joint. Um, the rag joint on the steering column, which goes up into 
the, uh, the steering uh, housing has to be removed from the gearbox. Before we do all that, we'll go ahead and remove the tie rod end from the pitman arm so we can uh, remove the gearbox out of the car. So I guess that that's what you're going to do. What I want you to do, Dave, is contact me when you get that out. Uh, we're not going to sit here and babysit you. You look like you're a professional. And I think you can do that by yourself. And I think that I walked everybody through what to do without watching you do it. No problem. So you got an answer for that. No problem. Think of some answers, okay, Dave? Think of, think of this as a technical school for the world out there to watch and learn. You do a okay? very good job at okay. that. Okay. And I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want answers from you. Let's get Larry the lawnmower guy over here. Let's see if he has any answers. Maybe you could take a few pointer tips from him. <laughs> Possibly. Okay, what's up? Larry, lawnmower guy, riding guy, Larry. What's going on? Oxygen situation. Hey, that's a good answer. You answered that. Now, what are you doing with oxygen today? We're not working on that with a Mustang. We're not using cutting torches. No, probably not. Okay. You want to come over and answer a few questions? Kind of give Dave a few pointers on what's sure. going on? Let's see if you know what's going on. I have no clue. Okay, it's a Mustang. Okay, I'm trying to tell Dave that this is a, a DIY auto school class for the world to learn how to do stuff, and he needs to start talking up and bucking it up to explain to people what's going on. Am I right, Larry? I guess. I don't, how are you going to... Okay. Somebody that I, you're, at, you're, ask, I'm trying you're to asking teach. questions of people that don't know. Okay, do you know where the gearbox is on this steering gearbox? Can you show us that? Uh, show us where the gearbox is on this, Claire. It doesn't have a bumper. I don't know. I always measure off the bumper. Larry, why don't you go out there and work on your shake tree mechanic bullshit, okay? And and waste more uh, oxygen and acetylene to tinker toying around. And make sure you start a fire. I'd appreciate it if you brought a five gallon jug of water down there so the fire doesn't start. Oh, uh, okay. Alright, that was not a good answer, Larry. Okay. Alright, thank you. Alright, Dave, answer this question. Don't you measure off the bumper back to the gearbox? Sure. That's what I always thought. That's what my dad taught me. You go to the bumper and you measure back to the gearbox. Okay, answer this, Dave. Answer this question, Dave. What are you pulling behind you? Jack. Jack, jack a jack? What kind of jack? A pop bottle jack? Yeah, pop a bottle A hydraulic jack? jack? Yes. Yeah. Come on, Dave. Get with the fucking program, Dave. Wake up. It's fucking two hours past the time you're supposed to start working. Thanks to you. <laughs> Whew. It's going to be a doozy today. Oh, you like that? Was that funny? Was that funny, Dave? Sure. So once you get the gearbox out of the car, this is basically what you're going to be looking at, a raw, bare frame rail. Um, as you can see, we got the steering uh, shaft that goes to the column, and um, on this particular shaft, it is a collapsible shaft. Now what Dave has done is he went ahead and removed the rag joint itself. Now the collapsible steering column has got to be moved in approximately two inches to install the new power gearbox that we purchased from this company right here which I don't like to advertise but for you the viewer to understand what the fuck's going on we have to advertise today So if we look right here, you can see the difference in the old gearbox versus the new gearbox. It's twice its size and it also has the gear, power steering gear pump built onto the gearbox itself. Um, this would be your factory original one right here and then this would be your power gearbox right here. 
And then of course we got our brand new rag joint right here that came with our kits. Um, you can see this is our old rag joint. It's used and abused. But as a good mechanic that Dave is, he went ahead and saved every nut and bolt uh, possible because you don't want to throw anything away until the job is completely done. All right, so now that we went all over that, Dave did his job. Let's see what Dave's got in his hand and ask him what we are doing with that out of the car. You can bring it over here now, Dave. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove the gearbox. And instead of bringing the gearbox to the part like Barney was doing, uh, the Flintstone style, we got went ahead and lifted this up to bring it over to the gearbox. We're going to remove our gland nut, all right? This is a nice brand new gland nut with a lock washer. Do you see that, Dave? Okay. And we will take the Pitman arm, if Dave will go ahead and do that. All right, so Dave's going to take the Pitman arm and he's going to see if it fits onto the gearbox so we don't have to buy another one. Uh, you think you got it upside down? Does it go one, one way, Dave? I can't see behind your tattooed hand there, but that's all right. Okay. So, uh, as you notice, Dave the mechanic, Mr. Professional, had it upside down and it wouldn't fit because that is actually a one-way fitting situation. Now, are we good to go with this type, this uh, yes. Pitman arm? Is it going to work for us? Dave yes. the mechanic guy, Mr. Professional that you are. Yes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you the difference between a manual gearbox versus a power steering gearbox. If Dave can go ahead and stand that up right there, I'm going to go ahead and take this nut off. Because we're not going to use the old nut, we'll use the new one, am I right? Yes. Okay. So if you look at the two in reference, you can see that this one, hold that up right there. There you go, Dave. Okay. You can see the difference just in the angle and the fit that this is going to be a little bit taller than this one here. That's why we have to take the collapsible steering column and push it into the steering column itself. That rod will move. You have to take a hammer and tap on it. And you want to do it very slowly and easily as you do it due to the fact that you don't want to go too far in. We are working on a car that's over 30 years old and we don't want to break anything as we are working on it. Now, one more thing we have that I want to ask you, Dave, Mr. Professional that you are that went to ATI Tech School uh, that only went there for three or four months and dropped out. Uh, let me ask you a question <laughs> if I can. Okay. Uh, didn't you say you dropped out? More, no, there's... Okay, you got kicked out. Story. So you got no, kicked out. No. You quit? No, it's a long story. Okay, so no, one or the other, the three or four, that's what happened. Um, let me ask you a question, Dave. Um, the rag joint itself, once you put that on, now isn't it very important that you have that lined up on this gear uh, properly so when you turn your steering wheel, it'll be lined up when the wheel's straight, the steering wheel's straight. Or can you adjust that with the steering wheel itself? I can adjust that with the steering wheel. That should be set right in the center. So what you're saying is the gearbox from the factory should be set in the center um, and should be, there shouldn't be any left or right movement once you put it in, set the steering wheel to where the steering wheel is straight and it should all line up perfect. That should be set in the center okay. like you're going straight okay. down the road. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Have you done this before, Dave? Yes. You have converted cars over from manual to power. Well, I've done many gearboxes. But... Are you a gearhead? Would you call yourself a gearhead guy? I guess. Okay. Can I see your tip? Okay. There you go. Gearhead Dave. Oh. Chevy man. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, uh, anything else you want to say before I leave you alone? Because we nope. can't watch you work. You get too nervous. Nope. Okay, what do you want? Is that it? That's it. So we're trying to give everybody a DIY, do it yourself at home, but you won't let us watch you put it in. I mean, what's going on with that, Dave? I, I'm totally new at this, so... Okay, hold on. Did you just hear what he said? I thought he was a fucking professional. He just said he's new I'm at this. New at I thought he said he was fucking. He just I said he's new. At Hold on. The way Are you, you fucking do new at mechanic work or have you done this no. before? Don't I've lie to it. us, Dave. Mechanic guy, fuck off, dude. I've done it for a very long time. Okay, make your mind up. I'm new at filming. <laughs> okay, we got a YouTuber guy over here. His name's Joey. What do you think of this clown act over here, bud? I like fucking it. mechanic guy. Well, well, let's do see, you let's think see he's going to be do. able to do it or. Should I go ahead and just drop what I'm fucking doing and, and do it myself and he can watch me? I don't know. Should I micromanage him, Joey? You can. <laughs> you think I ought to do it my friend Pete Wade? I'll just do it and he can stand there and watch and get paid for watching. He might like that. <laughs>
He might like it. Yeah. All right, Dave, I want you to do me a square deal. When you get all them nuts and bolts cleaned out and get that all uh, concourse restoration style the way I want it with a little bit of grease in those holes and, you know, lubing it up real good, you call me back and let me know, okay? Okay. That should take you approximately 45 minutes to an hour to do a proper clean job that you should be doing on this car. Okay. You got plenty of Dr. Peppers over there to suck down on and, and waste the day as you're doing that. Okay, Dave? We'll be yeah. back. Bye. So, tell us what you did here, uh, Super Dave, mechanic guy, fucking uh, Superman. What happened? Got the frame Talk all, loud, dude. Got the frame all cleaned up. Okay, now see how nice that looks with the frame looking beautiful and new? Aren't you more proud of that? Mm -hmm. Aren't you more proud of cleaning that up and, and making it look brand new than just slopping it on there and saying, hey, I got it in? That's... It gives you a sense of pride when you can look at that and say, I fucking did that. I did that right there, and it looks brand fucking new. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, so the lesson that we've learned today is that uh, it's better to go ahead and take your time, uh, take about an hour, that took about an hour, am I correct? To go ahead and clean your area up, make it look like the rest of the car, and don't slop things together, and uh, be prepared to have an attitude that says, you know what, I love the work I'm doing. Very true. Okay, so what do we got going here, Dave? Got the new bolts, got the new plug. Okay, what is that in your hand? Is that like a yo-yo uh, with no string or what? Bushing that goes in. Okay, what is this rag, thing? The rag joint. That is a rag joint. Can you explain to everybody what a rag joint does? Yeah. Or would you rather me do that? Go ahead, you're better okay. at it. What a rag joint is for, it's for an anti-vibration, and also it's, a, it's a, a, a safety mechanism that if you get in a wreck, it will help the steering wheel collapse, and it also gives it play and when you got stress and, and manufacturers of moving up and down, rough road riding, this is the rag joint that's going to help you. Now, the real question is, are aftermarket rag joints as good as factory ones? I don't see No, they're not. not. No, they're not. Okay. I would prefer to get a factory rag joint over uh, an aftermarket one, and I'm going to show you a reason why. If you look at the factory rag joint versus the aftermarket rag joint, you're going to see that these are riveted together. There is no bolts to come loose. There is nothing that will um, accidentally vibrate loose versus this rag joint that has the nuts, bolts, and washers. All right? And eventually, those will eventually come loose if they're not properly tightened. And I'm going to ask you another question. Did you put Loctite on that, Dave? I did not do those. Then it's not loose. ready to install, sir. Then I can loosen okay. it. Okay. Have it some common that. sense and say to yourself, that's fucked. They didn't put no Loctite on it, so I better do it for them. So if you can locate the factory rag joint, it would be a better uh, experience and safety precautions for you to use this versus this. Uh, what Dave's going to do to make this more safety cautious for us is he's going to go ahead and take these nuts loose and put some red Loctite on them and tighten them down as tight as he can get them. I wouldn't tighten them that tight, though, Dave. You're kind of a gorilla guy. I right. won't use air. Yeah. Let's not tighten them too down, because then what's going to happen to our rag joint? Yeah, you can crush it. It's going to crush and squeeze and crack and, yeah, okay. Um, one other thing that I noticed, can I, can you turn that over? Uh, this is another thing that I noticed versus the, see this little uh, sleeve right here that's surrounding that? Okay, the factory put that sleeve on there so it won't crack and peel around there versus this one where it just has this little washer holding it on. Okay, uh, Dave's been tinker toying around now for about 45 minutes to an hour. Let's see what he got done. And hopefully he's ready to put the gearbox in the car. Just got done. Okay, what's the, going on? What did you do? Washers off. Okay, so hold on. You just cut the. Oh, you took those off the old rag joint for protection. Right. Because we were explaining to everybody how dangerous it was without them. Right. So what do you think of that idea? Look. You think it's a good idea? Yeah. So you just learned something over here at DIY Auto School, didn't you? Mechanic yeah. guy, fucking Dave. You're always learning something. Okay. All right. So we went ahead and. 
you took your cutting wheel and got these washers out, if you can flip it over, all right, to make sure that we got a nice secure fit, just like the factory. I like the way you did that. Now what's next? Just putting it on. Okay, let's go ahead and put the rag joint on. Now remember, we have to push the rag joint in approximately an inch and a half to two inches, but we'll go ahead, since we already hammered it once, right? Yes. We'll go ahead and try to fit on it and see what happens. Now, are you going to put that on loosely until you get it all together so it's kind of yeah, wobbly around? Loose. Okay. So basically what Dave did is he went ahead and took the old rag joint, removing the uh, triangular style washers, and he replaced them, putting them on the new rag joint for safety and security. He also went ahead and added Loctite to the bolts um, where the rag joint bolts on to the... Uh, T sprocket style fucking uh, fitting that goes on to the gearbox. Okay, now before you put that in, do we want to make sure our steering wheel is like in the right position? Or what I am fixing to look at. And then of course on this car we really can't. Okay, there it is, right there. Okay. I was gonna say with that aftermarket bullshit going on, we don't know. But I guess you know, be. Dave. You know, cause you're the fucking guy. Don't drop that. That's expensive. That's five hundred. I already dollars. put the fittings on. Okay, it. now when you put those in, did you go ahead and put uh, Teflon uh, tape in Teflon that? Teflon taped them. Okay, are those tight? Yes, they okay, are. Okay, so you went ahead and put the adapters in. Now uh, I was going to explain to everybody one adapter is different than the other. They're not exactly the same. Yeah, they're different sizes. One size is smaller than the other, and right. you kind of fucked us in the ass on that day because I was going to show everybody that. No. But you know what? It's too late now. All we can do is super Dave to the fuck off rescue of getting ahead of the game. Always ahead of the game. Now I noticed that the nuts and bolts that uh, you got on there, those are brand new. Did that come with the kit or? Came with the kit, yes. Okay. And I also see that uh, that rag joint has got to be moved up pretty far. Yes, you, it does. Can you see that? So, do you think we ought to go ahead and hammer that baby up in there before we put the gearbox in? Yes. Thank you, Dave. Okay, what Dave is doing now is he is taking the collapsible part of the steering wheel and he is pushing it into the column itself due to the fact that the uh, power steering gearbox is approximately two inches uh, larger in diameter than the manual steering box. And that is a necessity when you do this job. I believe he's going to have to hammer it in a little bit farther, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I offered to help him, and he doesn't want me to help him. Okay, looks like you're going to have to go a couple more inches, Dave. Uh, we might have to cut the outside ring of that steering column to uh, get it up there far enough. We might have to cut that off, dude. But we're going to go ahead and try it. Um, yeah. So Dave is going to go ahead and hammer it in there as far as he can, all the way up. And I believe that we will probably have to remove that one inch of outer shell from the steering column to make this work. Well, we don't want to go too far because then it'll start rubbing. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to cut the outer ring of that. Uh, can you do that or do you need my help, Dave? Yeah, I'd rather your help. All right, so we have found out that by installing the uh, gearbox at hand on our 69 Mustang, we're going to have to modify the steering column. Um, pushing the collapsible part of the steering column is not enough to clear. We're going to have to cut that uh, one and a half inch or one inch tab off of the steering column to move the uh, collapsible part up into the steering column itself to uh, line everything up and hopefully get everything fit together. DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.